Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man DT in the building. Me again, big up, right? What's <laughs> the matter with you? You missed me that much. I missed you, man. No, I don't miss you at all. Yeah, right. Um, got over the uh, Euros yet? Yeah. That quick? Yeah. And then Arsenal ruined my day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, oh. it's, very, it's very Arsenal like to, you know, make you forget about the disappointment of the Euros final. <laughs> by um, bringing you back down to reality of the problems that we do have at the club. <laughs> but um, yeah, look, listen, the, um, the, the final. Euros, yeah. Yeah. The Euros final, right? When you saw Saka stepping up to take that final penalty. I walked away. I walked away, I couldn't believe it. I genuinely could not believe that he was walking up to take a penalty. As Arsenal fans, we know he's never taken a professional penalty never. in his life. Never, ever. Ever. And like, I'm not saying I don't trust the boy, and I know how much confidence and, you know, but penalty number five. The, pen, the main penalty. Four the and penalty. five are the two, two big penalties for me. Four and five. I'd rather Saka gone number one or two. No, to me, your best penalty taker takes your first penalty, mm -hmm. right? Because you want to get off to a good start. And so that's why they had Harry Kane, their best penalty taker, take the first one. Yeah. And your best penalty, and your your two best penalty takes the first and the last one. The next right? best penalty taker is Rashford. Exactly, and so what I'm looking at, I'm not saying that Saka can't take a penalty because obviously he must have been training impressed mm. with his penalty taking, but he's got to take the second or third one. He, he comes up after Harry Kane. He, Rashford has got to take that last penalty. I, yeah. I just could not understand what I was no, watching. No. And then I'm there and I'm going, please, man, please yeah, don't miss it. I know. And, and you know, did. you're up against Donnarumma, who's a huge <sighs> goalkeeper. I mean, the margins, the margins, because what a lot of people forget is that, you know, Italy missed two penalties as well, yeah. including Jorginho, who's a very experienced mm. and brilliant penalty taker, yeah. who hardly ever misses. The pressure got to him as well. So why were they expecting Saka? 19. I don't know. I honestly can't answer it. Um, Gareth Southgate has come out and already said that it was his decision. It was down to him. Jack Grealish has come out and said, I'm not having anyone say that, you know, why did I let him go up and take it, etc. I wanted to take one, but the manager decided who the five would be. And, you know, I just, it, it's not so much him taking a penalty. It's the position he took it. Like you said, five, mm. two or three. You know, don't don't be taking you know you know number five. Like, I just genuinely don't understand the logic behind it at all. And I know that Rashford missed, but he's the only other player in that squad that I can think of that was a penalty taker, has taken penalties, high pressure penalties. I can think of PSG. Yeah. Last minute of the game. Yeah. Needs to score to send Man United through. Yeah. And he steps up and puts it in. Like he's been there. He's done it. So he is, a player, he is a player. He is a player where pressure. you would go, okay, I get it, you know. But the the logic behind bringing two players on with a minute to go and saying, you know what, your first touch of the game is actually going to be the penalty. The other part of the logic is, you know what, I've not really trusted either of you throughout the whole of this tournament, but I'm now going to trust you to take two of the most important penalties in the history of English football. And that's simple facts. Apart from Saka being injured against Ukraine, Jadon Sancho wouldn't have played any minutes in this apart from the odd little bit here or there. That's the only reason why he started against Ukraine because Saka was injured. And apart from that, he's either not got on the pitch or he's got about five, 10 minutes. So you're now entrusting him to go on and take the biggest penalty kicks in their, Ster Sterling, their life Sterling should have took one well the Sterling I know, situation I know, I know he's, he's, he's been pretty poor I but think he... he's missed three of his last five so maybe there's a thought process behind that I can get it but Harry Maguire has never taken a professional penalty before his was the best out of the whole entire lot put your foot through it just walk up bang no one can argue against it. Mm. I've always had this thing against this stuttering and going around the ball and stuff like that. Because when you've got a goalkeeper like Donnarumma, who calls your bluff, because it's like poker, they do their little stutter, their little movement around the ball, so that the goalkeeper makes a move, leans one side, gives the 
you know, penalty taker that advantage. But Donnarumma just literally stood there, stared him square in the face. I ain't moving. Now what you're gonna do? And the rest is history. And yeah, it was a shame. And then, of and course, it. with what came after it, we knew it. Right? We knew what was going to happen. You know, um, Robbie, I remember we, we were watching was the happen. stream, and um, Expression showed me his phone where one of his mates, this was before the penalty shootout even started, where one of his mates said, Yeah, these black players miss these penalties tonight. They better turn off their social media. That's what he said. Mate, but it, got, it was even more horrific than what we thought yeah. was coming. And do you know what? Some of the stuff that I see as well is that um, there was talk about if you're if you're black and in and around the Wembley area, go somewhere and be safe because people are being targeted or attacked. Do you know now, what, right? I can't prove that. I can't. This is what was being said, and there's a few videos circulating, and we don't know the the full context of everything. But <coughs> that is what was being said on social media that you know you're you're in danger because you're black. Do you know the thing is right? It was, it was on the on the on the day on the night of the game, right? So when I'm driving home, I was like, we obviously we were doing the streams for the Don Robbie channel and that, and then mm. we were you know we were all there chatting afterwards and stuff like. That. So I didn't get home until pretty late, and I hadn't checked my phone. And then I looked at my phone, and my daughter had sent me a, te a text that said something like, "Dad, get home as soon as you can. They're coming for the black people." And I, and I couldn't, I, was like, I couldn't make heads or tails off because at that time, right, after the game had finished, I didn't really know what was going on with regards to the, the extent mm. of, you know, all the problems and all the racism that was going on. So I didn't really get it. And then it wasn't until the next day that I'm like, oh, she was trying to warn me yeah. to say to me, imagine that, you know what I mean? And I was just appalled by what went on it's not a surprise yeah I was going to say but, I've but got are to you say, surprised I'm not surprised because as I said we saw it coming but I was surprised as to the extent of it mm -hmm. and I think you know do you know what it's the been true, the biggest the true, sorry to, say, to interrupt there but the true saying and I see this when I saw the pictures of Sterling, Sancho and Saka and whatnot this week is that English when they win black when they lose yeah and that and, and let's even go away from England Black players at club level do something wrong instantly, go onto Instagram, Twitter, whatever it might be, banana emojis, monkey emojis, all these kind of things instantly. And it's to a point now where you're like, you even say if a black player misses a penalty or something in a game, and it could be Man United, Arsenal, or whatever it is, and you can go, yeah, I would like to be him on social media tonight. You can you, forgive you a know. black player in the future for saying I ain't taking that penalty. Yeah, because I know what's going to happen if I miss yeah. it. If I miss it, and like you said, this has happened. This happens at club level. This is a problem in the game. Society needs, in in society, and it spills into football a lot yeah. more than any other sport. But do you know where it spills from? And I'm not going to go down the whole political route here, but it spills from the top in this country, because when you have the prime minister of this country referencing Muslim women that wear burqas as letterboxes. What exactly. do you expect? And black what? people as picking ninnies. And then you've got the, the home secretary. And I was, I would love the way Tyra Minks called her out oh. where she's saying, Oh, it's disgraceful and that, but yet still a few weeks before that, she was saying that, you know, everyone's got the right to boo them taking the knee. Yeah. Right, and, and now you're proud of everyone because they're getting to the final in it. Yeah, Hypocrisy, so ex top ex to exactly like what you just said. Now, great when you're doing well, black, but when, when it not. ain't going so well, I mm. know oh you know. You, you, and I've got to say, right, I, I just see now I, this whole thing's blown up. And I was chatting to a friend of mine, and he's going, "You know what, Robbie? He goes, I ain't, I ain't supporting England no more. I'm done with it now. I'm not supporting mm. England no more." He goes. Growing up, I never really used to support England because of the racism. Mm. And I can tell you that that's facts. There's a lot of black people, even me, I never really used to warm to the England team when I was growing up because all I associated the England team with, right, was the racist fans that used to follow it. There used to be a big amount of racist fans that, have followed, that used to follow England. I think that as really, as years, <coughs> as years have gone by, 
it's got less and less and less until mm. now they're in a real minority. Mm -hmm. Unless, <clears throat> excuse me, let's make it really clear, it is a minority. Because I, I went to the semi-final and the vibes that you was at the semi-final mm -hmm. as well, and the vibes at the semi-final was brilliant. I was struck by the amount of black fans there, Asian, mm -hmm. women, you know, it was just a, it was just a great... But. But what? What if we'd have lost? What if we'd have lost? Yeah, but I'm, I'm just trying to talk about... I this. know, I know what yeah, you're saying. But I'm trying to talk I mean? about the demographic. And I, yeah. I feel, I feel there's a little bit of a culture war, even within football going on, in that you've got some fans that back in the day, they used to be those racist fans at football. They mm -hmm. used to be those guys that did all the hooliganism and fighting and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And now they're in a minority and they don't like the changes they see in football. They don't like when they see black people that are there at an England game. They don't like when they see Asian people there. They don't like the fact that we're saying, oh, you know what? We feel really connected to this team. This feels like our team. Mm. They don't like it. They but you know what? They no. can't really say anything because you can't if get they, away if, with it if no they, more. Yeah, you might not. But then, what happens is sometimes when it goes really badly, the they true, can't help it. Yeah, true colours. The come true out. colours. And there's, that, just, there's that video it comes of that guy. Out, Have it? you seen that video of the guy that's got his face painted with the St George's cross, mm. and he's sitting there, and the things that he's turning around and saying, like, like they can't hold it in. But what, like, what? makes you think that you're going to say something of that nature and then go let me upload it to social media like Listen, dt right? I, I, I just don't understand the logic these behind fans, it like, these <laughs> fans right these fans and they are there and they're at every football club they're at every football club right and these fans they don't like they don't like people like me being a, a, they don't a like modern football. This brings everything true, true to form for me, and this hits home very hard for me. And some people might not like what I'm going to say, but you know me, I say exactly what I think, whether people like it or not. Now, one of the big problems, we've got lots of problems at Arsenal, but there's one problem we don't have. Let me make this very clear, is that, well, it does happen at Arsenal, but... We're very multicultural at Arsenal. There's mm -hmm. not the racist problem, um, you know, associated to us that there would be at other clubs, shall I say. But there is- It's not as bad as other clubs. There is racial problems at every club. Yeah, I'm it's not, not as saying bad as that other we're clubs. We're whiter than white and it's all lovely. And, we're one of the better clubs, yeah. We're one of the better clubs, best way of wording it, yeah. But what I've seen is that there's this cancel culture in terms of modern football that you're not, proper arsenal because yeah. you're not it's modern football you get in front of a camera or do this that the other and what this is is a bunch of old men wear gazelles sniff coke get get steaming and think that they can go run around like it's still the 80s and 90s i don't care who i offend because there's a lot of people that are part of that demographic that i actually get on well with and they're not racist and they don't care about modern football all right, and they're really genuinely nice people. So if you don't fit into that criteria, then this doesn't, you know, mean you. Yeah, I'm on about the ones that have this issue. I'm on about the ones that went to an Arsenal game and sat there singing about my mum. Do you remember that? Mm. You went to an Arsenal game and you claim to be proper Arsenal, yet you were more interested about me and singing songs about me because I go on a YouTube channel than you were with what was going on on the pitch. Who's proper Arsenal? Not you, just because you don't like something. I think it was Ricky Gervais that once said it. <clears throat> and he goes, it's like he has about 8 million Twitter followers or he doesn't know who follows him, doesn't know, you know, he tweets for himself. If you don't like it, move on it's like being in a town center and there was a board up and it said about guitar lessons and then you sit there and go well i don't want guitar lessons and there's a number there let me ring them up i don't want guitar lessons what are you advertising that for <laughs> it's not for you is it so why are you getting offended but by I, it move it, on you know i'll take it further than that right i'll take it further than that and say that there's some fans that don't like people like me because we're black. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you as it is right now, mm -hmm. this, is, this is it straight up, right? And 
let me make it clear. Some mind. I always have to make this clear because I don't want people to think that this is a majority thing. It's a minority. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a small minority of fans, but they can be quite vocal. They don't <laughs> like people like me. I remember one guy came up to me one time at a game and he was talking to me and he was going on about troops. And he goes to me, he goes, he ain't proper Arsenal fan. He's not a proper Arsenal fan. And I said to him, why? He goes, he's just, he's not a proper. I said, listen, I go, troops goes to every single game. This is before he went to America, obviously. I said, he goes to every single game, home and away. He goes to Europe. So if he's not a proper Arsenal fan, what is? You may not like him. Mm. You may not like him. You may not like what he says. You may not like him personally. Mm -hmm. But why is he not a proper Arsenal fan? I get that directed at me. You're not a proper Arsenal fan. Why? I've been supporting Arsenal for, you know, nearly 40 years. Since you left Luton. Right? Remember. Since <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Luton <laughs> fan. I'm all this <laughs> bullshit, right? Yeah. You're not a proper Arsenal. Why? You tell me why. I've been supporting this club for over 40 years. I used to go to Arsenal from Hybrid days. I, 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 Mate, I, we've, we've, got, brought, we've had I, to bring I don't, pictures up. I don't, I don't have to evidence <laughs> what I've done, right? No, right? I know. So, but <laughs> I, I, when some of these people are saying it to me, I know what they really mean. Yeah, and this is the type of fans that you've got. Those are the type of fans that you saw the other day at that game. They don't like black, you know, when they used to go to um, watch England back in the day, I remember when John Barnes was playing. Mm -hmm. I'm a little older than some of these guys, uh, some, of, some of you guys, right? I remember when John Barnes was playing in a game, John Barnes scored a goal and these fans were saying that don't count. It's still like we're winning 2 0. Barnes scored one goal. They were like, no, we're winning 1 0. Because the black guy scored. That don't count. So they've had that in them for a long, long time. Mm. And when they get angry, when they've had a load to drink, when it all goes wrong, it all spills out. They can't hold it in no more mm. because they don't want us there. But I'm, my message to us as fans is. Let's not let them drive us out of the game because there's nothing yeah. they love more. And this is what I was saying to my friend the other day. I said, there's nothing they love more than for you to stop following England. Mm. Let's get them out of the game. Let's yeah. call them out and let's get them out of the game. When they're being anti-Semitic, when they're being racist, when they're being, you know, against women, all stuff like that. Let's get them out. Mm -hmm. We don't want them in the game no more, no. man. We're fed up of these guys. They disgraced the nation the other day. I was so proud of that team. Yeah, that team, I when I mean. look at that team, and I look at the players in that team, right? I look at the players that are representing me. I, I can really relate to that team when I see, because it's black, white guys, they're all together. Mm. Just like we are on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't see color, they're just mates. They're footballers, professionals, doing their job, right? And then you got these guys, they're trying to roll it back to those dark, dark days of football mm. when there was racism, hooliganism, you know, there's all some little other things like booing other teams' national anthems. And we stopped that shit. I was embarrassed when I went to that semi-final mm. and I heard a few boos for the Denmark national anthem. What are you booing their anthem for? Yeah. They didn't boo ours. Do you, do you know it's what bullshit. The, um, do you know what right? the, um, It's absolute serious. I, 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 I get honestly, what you're saying. No, I know what you're honestly, saying. Honestly, these things now are really... I, know, you I can know, see how much it's winding you no, up. No, but you know what? Right? I get it's time. It's time now. You know what I mean, it's, it's absolute bullshit. I know it is. You know what I mean? You're going to boo the Denmark... They didn't boo ours. We ain't got nothing against Denmark. They ain't done nothing to us. No, no. Right? Players are taking the knee. The manager, the players, they came out and they said, listen, this has got nothing to do with any movements, political movements. This has got nothing to do with defunding the police. This has got nothing to do with statues. This is us showing solidarity to black players to say that, listen, you are the same as us right and we want equality and then you've got idiots who come and they boo and then when you ask them what 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 why you boo no because they want to take the statues the, the manager gareth southgate come out harry kane come out he said he's got nothing to do with that why are you still booing you know why you're booing you know why you're booing because you just don't want these black players playing for you end of 
Don't give us no crap. Don't try and go around with circles. And then politicians mm -hmm. that were backing up, they've been embarrassed now. That pretty Patel embarrassed because mm -hmm. she she was literally trying to back it. Now she finds herself on the wrong side of the yeah. argument. That's uh, why she's and, trying and, to roll it the, back. The funniest thing, there's even been MPs that are telling Tyrone Mings to concentrate on football and stay out of politics. Well, hold on a minute. Don't, don't, we, he's, don't, he's, uh, don't we have um, don't we live in a country where we have freedom of speech? It's not Plus as well, it's not did, a democracy. Did, did, didn't they have on, you know, the Prime Minister had on a football top? So what, what, should he stay out of football? Yeah. I mean, listen, the guy's, but then, but then the guy's the entitled thing, to have his opinion. But, but then there's something these MPs actually forget. Those MPs work for us. Exactly. Because what are the MPs exactly. are there for? They work for us. Exactly. So why don't you actually go do your jobs properly? But we, we got to, with this football thing now, we got to start taking it back from those idiots who keep embarrassing us. Because as I said, I get, I feel sorry sometimes for the majority of fans. I went to Russia for the World Cup. I see no problems. I was I was um, at the game, um, the semi-final. We've been doing lots of stuff with England. It, the whole country's been behind it. And then these minority of fools now come you, along. You right, summed it up right there. Got to get them out, man. When you went abroad to watch England and there was no problems of late, why? What, when we went to Russia? Yeah, why? Because those people you're talking about are banned. They can't True. go to other countries. And do you really think they're going to go to Russia and run their mouth? True, but so, you know, I mean, some of the scenes that I saw, you know, it just, we should be talking about the fact that, you know what, England, they got to the final. They mm. lost on penalties. They never lost a game in the whole tournament. They didn't lose a game in the whole tournament. They Conceded lost on penalties. Goals. I had to remind one of my friends the other day that, you know what, he was going, oh yeah, but they missed three penalties. I go, Italy missed two. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's a pressurized situation. It is. That's the margins. But at the end of the day, these idiots, it's time now, it's time. Government got to take action. Clubs have got to take serious action. We need these people marginalized and out of the game. Mm -hmm. Don't big them up. I remember one time when some of these idiots stepped to me at um, a football game, right? There's a, the, one of the newspapers said, they're real fans. These are fugs. Real fans. These are fugs, right? And you know uh. what I mean? Until we, we can't go around criticizing other countries. Oh, when you know, it happened over in Bulgaria and oh, we're just, we're worse. We're worse, you know what, right? They've probably got a little bit more, you can little, a little bit more sort of see with them because they don't really have a lot of black people in their country, right? Over <laughs> here, there's no excuse whatsoever for some of those scenes that we saw the other day. And these social media companies need to start throwing these people. How many more, how many more people, how many more times is this gonna happen where black players just get abused? At the end of the day. And called, you know, I, I, you Bobby. know, probably no doubt you'll find some of those comments on this video in the comment section. Yeah, because I've done videos what, before why was where I've called it out. Why was there a blackout? Because it ain't worked. It ain't worked. I've done videos before where I've called out. You know, where I, I remember I was doing a live video, and it was loads of monkey emojis in it, and people calling me, "Yo, sharp nigger, we don't want to hear this and stuff like that." <laughs> Anybody who don't want to hear this, you can shut the video off right now, right? Because I'm talking it, right? We got to get these people out of football. Saka, 19 year old kid representing his country. He could have represented Nigeria. Yeah. Maybe his parents are saying, you know what, you see? Should have probably represented Should have come and just say, you wouldn't have got that in Nigeria. No, right? you wouldn't have done. Right? He's like, no, I want to, I was born here. This is my country. I want to represent my country. Marcus Rashford has done so much. How much more can you have? What does that show you <laughs> that when a guy, he's done so much, he can't turn around and no. say, oh, one of them greedy footballers. Yeah, he's going to just go and spend all his money now. And look what the things the guy's done. And you still he's go and done. deface his mural. <laughs> he, you still call the guy a nigger. Uh -huh. He's what done. Fuck, he's, man? he's done what the politicians couldn't. If, if, if he's going to get abused here, yeah? if he's going to get racial abuse... Then there's no chance. There's no chance. I, I've got no chance. I've got no chance. You know and, I mean? I, and, I, and I said it. I remember when I did that documentary that, um, that I did on TV. And I said it at the time. I don't want my kids 
My son, my son now is 12. I don't want him to go to a football game and go through that. Mm. I don't want him to play football and go through that either. Mm. Not now, man. This yeah. is, this I get is, it. You know what I mean? I get it. Can I just say one thing about that mural as well with Marcus Rashford is how great the response was with everyone going That's there. It. Fantastic. And the messages. Fantastic. And that is the best way just to, shows you. to beat exactly. the mon minority. Exactly. Because the minority left a little message and that was now covered with a huge message. But you know what happened with the minority? And again, this comes back to some of the politicians and again, it comes back to Mings, what Tyra Mings said. They got, they got license. When they started turning around to him and saying, oh, well, if they want to boo, they can boo. It's not a problem. They, had, they felt the license to mm. say, oh, right, I'm booing, mate. <laughs> I mean, I'm not hiding no more. I'm going to actually tell people. They had license to do what they did yeah. because the people at the top told them it was fine right and something needs to be done now because I, 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 serious it's beyond a joke now mm -hmm. that thing has ruined what should have been a great tournament we should have been talking about the great tournament that England had we should have been applauding those players but my message to everybody out there keep supporting England yeah. keep supporting England don't say I'm not going to support England because if you do that they win. These people have won. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. They don't want us there. Mm -hmm. Don't want modern football. Don't want. They anything. want it like yeah, back in the day when we went. You know, we used to go to England game. You know, we boo the anthem. We boo the black players. You know, snort a few lines. Go outside. We smash up a this and smash up some, some up. Nah, 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 nah. Ain't nah, like nah. that no more, man. We want to change things in football right i know some people you know and and, and we we keep reiterating and even when you say about you know some of the some of the older fans there's a load of the older fans right they're, they're great people man yeah right it's 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 about a lot it's there's like a little five percent of hardcore horrible people that just do not want to change mm. and if they don't want to change don't come don't need you man yeah but anyway, listen, good luck to Saka, man. And I know the, the one thing I say about Saka, that kid's going to bounce back from that. Mm -hmm. He's that That's going to be, I said it the other day, I feel that's going to be the making of him. Yeah. That's what's going to, he was already a man anyway. Yeah. That's turned him into like, you know, that's going to make him so strong. Mm. And, you know, keep your head up. Yeah, Mr. Rashford, no, listen, keep your head up. A penalty doesn't, you know? doesn't define your career. Yeah, and do you know what, right? I, I don't think I've ever said this before. On, on on AFTV or, or on any right, got to big up Harry Kane with what he said. Yeah, Harry uh, Kane with what he said. Harry yeah. Kane came. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, steady on, steady I know on. when you when you were like had big up Harry Kane, I was like, Whoa, Harry well Kane. He came out and he said, "We don't want you lot." Yeah, those fans who feel that it's all right to do that, we don't want you. And I thought that that was the message. The it was a captain. Message. It was a captain statement. Yeah, we don't want you. If anything, and do you know what? He didn't just say that. It wasn't just lip service. He wasn't just saying that because he's mm. like, oh, oh he's, he's saying that because say he, he, he means it. it. He means it. He, he means those it. guys, those other players, the black, the white players, they feel it as well because those are their friends. Mm. And they don't look on their colour. They just look on their friends mm. and what's happening. So I, I just hope that there's there's a big reception for some of these players in particular. And, you know, when, when you go... There'll be a big reception and all that. But it's be, to me, it's beyond the reception now. We've got to start taking action. Yeah, of course. So of course. there's no more... Yeah, I mean, we, we listen, you ain't going to get rid of it overnight. No. Nah. But we've got to start, you know... And, and me personally, I'm calling it out every single time it happens from now on. Every single time. I'm calling it out. Mm -hmm. I'm not hiding... The, yeah, I mean, I did a video the other day. There was a Julian who was, uh, had anti-Semitic abuse. Mm. People telling me, oh, why did you do that, Robbie? You should... Oh, piss off mate I'm calling these things out whether it be Islamophobia whether it be r direct racism whether it be homophobia you know what I mean everybody should be able to go to football and watch their team mm. without that bullshit and that's that's you know yep. anyway I'm uh, talking to football <laughs> um, the friendly the other day <laughs> now I was watching <laughs> I was watching the game the other night was you um, watching the stream? I was watching the stream as well. Great stream, by the way. It was very entertaining, right? Mm. You lot were losing it. Come on, calm down, you lot, man. No. Bloody you, I saw, I saw you. Oh, we, you know, we're not prepared. And why, why are we playing players that we're going to sell? And I'm 100% right. I don't like, come, come, relax. I'm 100% right. Listen, right. don't get me right. 
it was poor. Don't get me wrong. I, listen, I, under, I understand. Don't get me wrong here. <laughs> I understand why you guys were upset here because I had a bit of that in me as well. I'm looking at it and I'm seeing the same players really from last year and I'm not really seeing any improvement and stuff like that. But then let's put it in context, yeah? One of their goals about a mile offside, first of all. That looked a mile offside, the, the second mm. goal. It's terrible defending, but it was offside. The first goal, oh, the keeper. I'm not even going to blame him. Right? Oh, he's a, poor, because he's, old yeah, Arthur. poor young kid, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, your first start and now. Oh, he he so should have just. For him. He should just have headed it away, shouldn't he? Yeah, I feel right? so sorry for him. But man. then we it's... missed the penalty. We hit the post. No, no, I know. I know what you're right? saying. And and I... it's the first game. As a matter of fact, Arsenal. I think um, when I was looking at everybody else. I think also like one of the earliest teams to play a friendly. I think West Ham have played a couple as well, mm. right? But I'm everybody just, else, everybody else hadn't even played I, no friendly. I, I get yet. what you're saying. They're but rusty. Can, can I can I just say one thing as well? And when that mistake was made by the goalkeeper, and I turned round, tongue in cheek, yeah, yeah, and said about get Ramsdale. <laughs> If you genuinely think I'm being serious, then you clearly don't know me because you will have heard me countless times on this show alone sit there and go mad about the thought of signing Ramsdale. So it was very... You did say it tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, it was, it was very tongue-in-cheek. I was laughing when you said And I instantly turned around and said about um, the young lad that I felt really sorry for him. Yeah, I felt because bad for him, was, man. I felt bad for him. It was like, him. oh, mate, he'd been at the club since he was seven or eight. He'd been dreaming of that moment. And moments before that, he dropped one as well. Do you know what I said so, as well? Oh. Do you know, what, you know what I said as well? When, when he did that, I'm like, bro... <laughs> I hope you ain't got many followers on your social media account either because you're going to get it. Mate, if but, he, were, if he was, luckily maybe, he didn't. maybe if he was a little bit more high profile, yeah, then l- luckily, might, and the game was more high profile. But yeah, my, my issue calm is this. Calm down, no, man, listen, when it's a friendly, listen, man. I'm going, to tell you, I'm going to tell you my issue right now, yeah? It's not the result. That's not the problem, okay? Pre-season, that is what it's all listen, about. We've seen okay? pre-season. Now, right? wait, wait, every wait, game. wait, wait, wait. Listen. The season where we went into becoming invincible and winning the title like in 03, 04, we lost our first two games, including, and I think we drew, I think we lost to Boreham Wood in one of them. And we drew to some side in Austria or some, I can't remember what mm. the exact results were, but it was a horrendous pre-season. And if social media was around then, we'd have been absolutely <laughs> having nightmares. But what I, my issue is this, yeah? There's players there that are being sold. We know they're going to be sold. Do not play them. Why can't I be no. stupid, man? You're why, not, why not? Why are you getting them fit? Because you want to sell them. For someone else? Right? Well, what, what are you going to sell a player First and not foremost, fit? you should be deducting Williams' wages until he gets fit. First and foremost. <laughs> Even I would look better in that kit. Like... I'm sorry I'm and not, I'm not going to make any I, comment listen right listen I, can't make I, no did, I, I did see your video where you turn around and say you kind of look down at yourself as if say like no I, ca- I, I can't really like <laughs> I can't. I, I'm not really one to talk am I listen we're not we're not all trying to make out that we've got the body of an Adonis right and we're like absolutely ripped with eight packs or whatever but these are like professional athletes the man's on 200 grand a week yeah but he's been on holiday isn't he you could come back with what are you on what about? Pre- preseason's all about, you, that, isn't Did it? you see Aubameyang or all them lot that were training yeah, him? Yeah, but he, he, looks come like, back he looks like he's been in Dubai eating that gold steak <laughs> for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, <laughs> everything. Like, I'm get... sorry, but I've never seen Willian look like that throughout his whole career. I don't ever remember him being at Chelsea Actually, and there we was... Need to, we need to see if it weren't like a camera angle or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> camera angle. Go watch the stream back. And the moment I saw him for the first time, I actually turned around and said, and I was very careful what I, I said. Bellerin because Bellerin had a few, was carrying a few extra pounds as well. He looked yeah, up. he's carrying a but few extra see, pounds above his lip, that silly tash that he's got. But <laughs> Listen, but man, no, no, it's pre-season. I don't care. If you're not going to be part of this club, then I, that you makes no sense. It does because what's the point? You're meant to be building for the season. They're not going to be part of the season. Kalazinak <laughs> should be nowhere near the team. Don't so say who, would you, who are you playing? Then? Left back. I'd p- rather play Maitland Niles there. I'd rather put Cedric at left back and uh, just fill the gap. Put a youngster in there. Give him some experience. Every I team don't care. plays players that are going to go. I no. As far as I'm concerned, Kalazinak should not be playing. Why? Right. Eddie's on his way to Palace or potentially on his way to Palace. So don't be playing him. Right, let me ask you this. Let and me I'm just going to say All one right. thing. Balogun has just signed a brand new contract 
and it's now going to be the future. So why are you playing Eddie ahead of him when it's clear that Eddie's being sold? Not playing Start ahead Balogun. Of him. Not playing ahead of him. We did Balogun, Balogun played the whole of the second half. They paid 45 why minutes each. Why start him? What difference does it make? Maybe he might start against Rangers. It's pre-season. I don't want none of these players playing for the team. It's pre-season. Uh, uh, let me, let, all right, just to show you that your point makes no sense here. Yeah? Number one, you want the players to, to be fit because you're going to sell them. No team's going to want to buy now. You've got to do a medical and what. They want to buy now a really unfit player. You want, you want them to maybe have a decent pre-season because if you're going to sell them now, go and play a game, the value will go up. Play games behind closed doors. So, for instance, right, if Eddie Enketia the other night, when he had that one-on-one, -on -one, which he should have scored, right? But if he scores that, and if he scores three, four goals in pre-season, yeah? Right? Because you use your whole squad in pre-season. When they're going to sell him, that say 10 million that they might have asked and they might be able to say well no we want 15 he's on fire right so it makes sense to play this and plus no. as well let me ask you this though what if they don't get to sell him what if in the end it ends up that all the deals fall through and they still got to keep him what do they want an unfit player he might have to figure in the squad they can keep fit in training they can have behind no, closed doors you've game. Got to, they've got to have Go. games they've you've got have to, games have you've in-house games. games that's your squad of players have in-house games that's your squad of first team players I don't players. want to see him I don't want to see you him you may not want to see him but that's your squad don't of first team players right and until they've left the club they're in the squads I don't want to see keep, and, and pre-season no one's going to be no one's going to be playing 90 minutes in that pre-season especially your first couple of games you're going to be playing like 45 and stuff like that so one minute's too much you want to use the whole squad nope I'd rather youngsters be given an opportunity they're part oh, of the future come on man no, you, you, I'm you're, being serious. What, what you're saying is making no sense no I would rather youngsters be given an opportunity I would rather an Amari Hutchinson given an opportunity on the wing no from the start instead of Willian I'd rather that. Because he's the future. I know he's the future. So, so give him the opportunity. And you never know. You give him those extra minutes than what you normally would because of the situation. They could end up bursting on the scene like quicker than you think, being another Saka or whatever it is. You could also argue you rushed them in. You could. But in that sense... Look at um, the keeper, right? In there from the start, makes a howler. That's what we all remember him now from that game. We 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 know he's a we know he's a very good keeper because but in he's that been promoted instance, to the first team. But in that instance, but makes a howler. So maybe if he'd have been eased in a little later, maybe you know what I mean. So you can no, you no, can, but in that instance, we don't have. Oh, well, whose fault is it? But we were actually left with no choice because we actually didn't have a goalkeeper. Well, that, that's we genuinely uh, didn't have a goalkeeper. Like there was nobody. Mm. I think we only signed him on a professional contract so he could play. <laughs> Like, because we had no goalkeeper. I'm not There's even joking. no goalkeeper, which we again really is what haven't. I was talking about last week. And you were having a go at me for that as well. When I said that we made a mistake with Martinez. Oh, yeah, but I, would still who, by rather, the way, but I would still rather no goalkeeper than Ramsdale. Who, by the way, is in goal, you know, when they did the team of the Copa America was in goal. Oh, next. Big mistake. Yeah, you say next, but it was a big mistake. You still don't want to admit it, but it was. that. That's proof of it the other day, that Leno's not playing. We ain't even got a backup goalkeeper. <laughs> I mean, and you wonder why I'm moaning, though. No, listen, I can understand why there were fans moaning, right? Because we finished the season off in eighth. We've come back pre-season against Hibernia, and you think to yourself, "All right, let's put a few goals past them," and we don't. But you got to understand, it's pre-season. I, 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 Hibernian as well. They've had quite a few games, haven't they? They, they, they. Mate, you sound like you work on Arsenal.com. Because that's what they were... I know, they, I, did hear, I did hear them at half time. Mate, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. The, the thing is... I heard I, what you said. Yeah. Funny, funny enough, right, is like, I, I was... Uh, obviously, I was on the stream, so I was watching it. And then at half time, I then was listening to them. And so was at I. At half time, yeah. And I was like, yeah, oh, hold on. Is it the same game? Yeah, they just watch thank you because... I, I, no, because, I, I, that, because, that I do agree because with Because I left. Because I'm like, no, I, man, I come off that, the stream. that first half was poor. We, we made some substitutions upstairs, like done mm. a little swap round, and mm. I was like, quickly going downstairs. And the game was on the telly on downstairs, so mm. I was like, let me have a little watch and see what they're actually saying. And it was like, hold on a minute. And then that's when I went back upstairs and I said to Turkish, I was like, do you know what they're actually saying? I heard you. And I was yeah. like... This is why some people would rather listen to fan cams and fan opinions on YouTube saying. and that because, because you know, we got, say what we see. To me, 
they are, come on, they were there saying that it's, it's been good. I was like, no, it ain't. No. I thought the second half was better. I thought when I thought Pepe, oh, yeah, we, we Pepe looked, looked lively. I thought Pepe looked lively. Lacazette the only looked lively. No, Lacazette, Lacazette wound me up because about three, four times he went to have a shot and scuffed the ball. No, but look at that run he did, man. When he no, I get that, four, but I couldn't players. work out what was going on with his shooting. He kept scuffing the ball like he was missing Yeah, it. but I, I lied to him. He, he had energy. You know, yeah, I mean, it's pre-season. And where did Party learn that, to shoot? What a shot that was. Oh, <laughs> the, mate, that nearly went in. Because I was thinking, when he went to take that free kick, I'm like, yeah, yeah that's, like, well, that's going to end up in Glasgow, you know? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they're they're, they're sending the match ball down to Rangers for like, Saturday it was, already. It was a great strike. Yeah, it was but, a great strike. That's his one in a every six months <laughs> strike done now. But the thing is, right, it's, it, it wasn't a great performance. And I understand why people were it's losing it a bit. It's how flat it was, Robbie. It just yeah. looked, looked laboured. Labor, it looked flat. It just looked one-dimensional. It was as if... I'd closed my eyes we were back in last season I also looked on that and I thought there's not and this is another reason for for pre-season and this is another reason why you do play some of those players right because I was looking at them like well if you are a player there's certain players there if you want to stay <laughs> at least put in a performance there were so many players there that didn't look they, like they, they want to be there yeah like Ainsley I don't think he done too bad. Well, Reece done well in the first half as well. Playing in midfield, Reece was okay. But look at Williams when he was off at half-time. I thought, I actually thought he was one of the better ones in the first half. He trudged off at half-time, man. I thought Kalas in that was dreadful, man. There you go, that's what I'm saying. You look at him and you just think, really? El Nini was very average, you know what I mean? I was like, if you guys are looking to stay, come on, put in a bit more, you know, it's the first game, but put in a bit more. All that did was emphasise how bad we are and what we need to do to but try then and fix a, but it. But then in a way, it's a good thing because it shows, you know, losing... If we go out there now and we beat Hibernian 5-0... Rangers. Right? No, no, I'm on about the game that just Okay, went. oh, yeah. So if we'd have went out there, we'd beat them 5-0. Everyone would be it, like, oi! Yeah, 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 you know what? Going to win know, the league. I actually think we keep him and, yeah, he's going to be all right. And, and No, I think by actually having that result, we look at it and we think to ourselves, you know what? Time for him to go... He needs to, yeah, I mean, uh, and it focuses the manager as well. The manager, now, for instance, when he watched that game the other day, he now kn knows mm -hmm. he must get a keeper. Mm -hmm. He knows that. Yeah, just not the ones we've been linked with. Right, he knows he's got to get a keeper. He knows that he needs a midfielder. He knows he needs a creative midfielder. He, it's, it's glaringly obvious. All the same problems were there. So, in a mm. way, that was the only good thing about the other day and it's on to Rangers next and I'll tell you what that, they, they'll be a much better team because oh, of course they will be you know they won the league by miles way better than Hibernian also they also are I think they've had a couple of games as well because they've got qualifiers coming up mm. so they're going to be sharper than Arsenal as well so yeah. that, that's going to be a much bigger I hope, test I as well I hope we start the Rangers game with more of the second half team than the first half one will it be a bit of the same I mean, I, I, maybe I, I, Tavares I, might play, but I, it'd be a bit of the same. I love the fact that Tierney's cut his holiday short, come back. Yeah. He, he was never going to miss a game <laughs> at Ibrox, was he? He was the Celtic boy in him was never going to miss a game at Ibrox, man. <laughs> Even though there's only going to be 2,000 fans in the stadium from what we've heard now, yeah. he will want to hear every single one of them abuse him. He will love every second <laughs> of it. So, um, yeah, that didn't surprise me at all. But, yeah, Tavares... Um, looks like he could be, um, you know, involved at some point. Um, so, yeah, I and think then, that we... And again, I was looking at it and I was thinking to myself, as well as that, Tierney's probably thinking to himself, oh, I had to get sharp for this season, man, because if Tavares comes in and he's good... Mm. Yeah, could be. Then yeah, so gonna, this is why... It's just pushing. This is why you need good signings, right? Mm. And, you know... What do you think of some of the... I mean, they're, they're, so let's run through some of the ones that get linked. Sam Johnson. I'd rather linked. him than Ramsdale. But you're not overexcited. It's a number two. It is what it is, isn't it? But... Mm. Yeah. Ben, ben White won. I've already, to look. I've already said about that I think that he fits the mould of what we want to try and create with the centre-back, which is a ball-playing centre-back. And if anybody's actually watched Ben White, they'll know exactly that's what he's all about. Comfortable on the ball, good passing, quick as well. I, I think that there may be this misconception that he's not quick. 
He actually is. And he can also play on that right-hand side. So um, I've got no problem with it. Yes, there is English tax, which we all know about. If he was Brazilian, he'd probably be 25 million, as random as that sounds. But yeah, mm. it seems to be If he was French, he might be 27 million. <laughs> right, and then um, this Albert Sambi Laconga. He's, he's looks like that's going to be done. Probably by yeah. the time this video is out, he might actually mm -hmm. be done. Happy with um, that one? Yeah, he looks a decent player. Seen some. Obviously, look, we we're not going to sit here and lie and say that we were watching Anderlecht all of last season. I was a season ticket holder and popping over <laughs> there. But um, listen, Vincent Company speaks very highly of him. Uh, who are we to argue with Vincent Company? Like at the end of the day, he's he's one of their hot properties, and they they were expecting very big things from him. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, spending money on him as well, it's not like peanuts, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's not a couple of million mm. or so. It's still a fair bit of money. Um, interesting story behind his number forty-eight that he's supposedly getting as well, because that's the postcode from the area that he actually lives in, in Belgium. So that's an interesting story. So for people that don't actually know why he wants number 48, it's just a shame it ain't one number up, innit? <laughs> Might have been a good open, 49. But um, yeah, so it, he's, again, it's gonna be a player that you're gonna have to see and see how he develops and handles the Premier League and everything else. And but what we can glaringly see, what's glaringly obvious is there's still that lack of creativity. Yep. And they've got to sort that midfielder. And yep. that's where <clears throat> my thing's been, man, that that should be the number one priority, man. That mm -hmm. that's, we're going to start the season probably with that, or whoever we bring in there wouldn't have had much yeah. of a preseason. Having yeah. no number 10 was <laughs> the reason why we were in the situation we were in at the beginning of last yeah. season. And I've seen images now as well of Emil Smith Rowe wearing number 10, the training kit. Mm. Now, like, what, what's really weird is that Arsenal have made a very, very, you know, uh, big effort to cover Emil Smith Rowe's number during training and everything else. Now, I, I thought he was going to wear 32 against um, Hib Hibernian because they had no names on the back or mm. anything else so coincides with a new kit just about to be released a home kit I think it was all but then just fans have taken pictures with him in Scotland and like he's there in the training kit with number 10 on so unless Arsenal have got him to wear it as a decoy for something else we don't know but if he's got the number 10 a fair play this to him summer, fair play to him but what great, does that say? Great young player, but this summer, if we don't fill that position, it's eighth again. Might be if worse. If we don't get a quality, creative player in that position, eighth again. And that's why my thing's been, all right, the Ben White thing, fair enough, but my priority, I mm -hmm. feel, is that position. That has to be, and if Xhaka goes, we've got to fill that position. Yep. Those two are very, very important. And... I don't see the strides being, you know, there's been talk, listen, if they go and get a Madison or something, it'd be fantastic. But that's the that's the type of player they need. Mm. Yeah, that's okay. the type of player Arsenal need to get because if not, A for Gent, uh, we'll be seeing, you know, I, I, I noticed the uh, other day you know, as well, we tried to go with like a 4 4 2. That didn't really work. No, that didn't work. Bamiang looked very quiet in that first half as well. Yeah. You know, it's it, have honestly, you, have you need got, uh, a creative player. Have you got a feeling that we're going to be short somewhere again? Yes. It's like deja vu, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And you see why I'm on. You see why I'm on. Because yeah, I, 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 I just feel that we'll get this player or that player or and then it'll get right down to the wire of the transfer deadline day and they'll try and get somebody and then like what they did with Thomas Partey and briefly you forget you're so caught up in the like, got Thomas Pye, oh my God, we've got a world-class player. Like, uh, yes, buzzing. I don't know why it takes us so long to get these top quality players, right? Because, you know. Well, we're going to find out soon, aren't we? You all know, or nothing. You, 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 all or nothing. Might as well call it nothing or nothing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, but we're going to find think, out. What do you think of that, doing that all or nothing thing? Boy, <coughs> boy, as, uh, there's, a, there's a few of the uh, proper Arsenal that uh, ain't happy about that, are they? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not happy at all. It's like, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It, it, we have it, always been a quite, you know, behind private. closed doors, a private club. Yeah. To, that's definitely a money play. 
Definitely. Because, you know, no Champions League football. Yeah. No Europa League football. 15 million getting for doing that. I, I'm not even sure if you get that in the Europa League. Could well be a new new uh, new thing. There you go, Mikel. Don't qualify for it every year. We just it's a lot of the money camera. they're getting for it. We just stick the cameras yeah, in. Yeah, a lot of money. 15 but million. What I want to see is I want to see like what it's like after a game when we lose. Yeah, you ain't going to see no, because it'd be all you know, edited it, and cut. Yeah, but you say that, but we saw some quite eye-opening stuff with the Spurs yeah, one, saw man. They we saw to players see. nearly fighting and everything. You'll see the odd little thing. Yeah, just, honestly, mm. man. They, I they, know it. I know it'll be watered down. <laughs> you know the things that go on if they showed that. They ain't showing oh, that, mate. Can you imagine? <laughs> At the end of the day, do you remember Amazon done our first ever series of the Blood Brothers thing? Mm. And it was like. Yeah, it's not gonna. They're not gonna let half of that stuff <laughs> show what they allowed with us. They stitched me right up with that. They did. But you see, with the, with, the, with the Arsenal thing, they they'll they'll say to them, nothing can go out until we've signed oh, it course. all first. So of course, you know. Yeah, there'll be certain things that can't go out, but yeah. it'd be nice just to see what goes on yeah, behind be the scenes. To, a it bit, will be good to see behind the scenes. It will be good what, to see behind the scenes. Know, and and let's, obviously, let's hope it's not a disastrous season. Let's hope how many it's times a, do you reckon Stan will be on it? Well, he won't be on it, will he? <laughs> he's never there is he but I'm saying would they not go over there they're filming part of it in America well that's what I'm saying would they well, not go over there maybe if they go when, they, when do they start I'm not even like sure you next know. week or something is it where are we going next week America oh I so said they might start the first ah <laughs> so there you go they might actually have like might do this, a little bit over in America yeah they might be like uh, let's get Stan in there and let him waffle <laughs> a load of crap and it's just like I think Josh will be in it yeah, I do, probably. I do. He'll probably. He, I don't he care will. whether they're in it or not. All I want them to do is make the right signings because we are getting down to, you know, it's less than a, what? It's just, just over a month away that first game against Brentford, right? And we better be ready for that game. And, and I'm saying, I'm saying we need that. We need that. I'm, I'm looking at the team the other night and I'm like, it's still no creativity. When's the window shot? 31st of August. And when's don't, our first game? Mid August, so don't be surprised, right? You know, we, that we, we lose we, the first couple of games and then we have yeah, to panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have we seen that before, haven't we? So, <laughs> but anyway, um, listen, what do you guys think? Uh, oh. I'd like to know from you guys what you made of the uh friendly the other day. Yeah, I think we know what, what they're gonna you, say. You know, who, who out of those players that you saw for you definitely needs to go? I want to hear that from you guys. Um, let us know in the we comments have below. A team left. <laughs> <laughs> and was DT overreacting? Nope. To that performance, nope. I want to. I want to know. And about I don't that want well. Ramsdale. When I find out who edited that video <laughs> together, I know that was Harvey. You said it. I know it was Harvey you that pieced it. that together and stitched me right up. Wait till I see it. He didn't him. stitch you up. You said it. Yeah, but not in that context, man. Context <laughs> is a big thing. When I see that, I was like, "You little shit." Actually, you can see the con. You can see you said it as a laugh. <laughs> You go, oh, oh right. for the people commenting, <laughs> Navin. Yeah, that's because they don't like you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there you go. You, you already know the drill. Yeah. All right, so listen. We'll um, see. And then, um, sorry, just, I uh, don't mean to interrupt, but already, just one point from that stream and everything, and I would just like to clarify a couple of things, and I would like to make an official complaint on air, where it can't be cut and we can see, all right? But we've been away from the Don Robbie stream for one game, and all of the sweets and popcorn in bowls and buckets with drinks gone. Yeah, we've decided to withdraw that for the next season. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. <laughs> the budget's gone. Right, so he's blown it on the anyway, Euros. Right, let us know. <laughs> let us know what, what you thought of the friendlies. Right, um, we'd love to hear your comments on everything we've discussed today. Thanks for watching the podcast. We'll be back next week, of course. We'll be discussing the Rangers one. Will there be any improvement when Arsenal take on Rangers, a way better team, the champions of Scotland, um, on the weekend? Let us know. <laughs>